An Iraq War veteran made a simply defining speech about his time in Iraq and the effect of the American foreign policy as a whole. So check it out. And I tried hard to be proud of my service, but all I could feel was shame. And racism could no longer mask the reality of the occupation. These were people. These were human beings. I've since been plagued by guilt anytime I see an elderly man, like the one who couldn't walk, who he rolled onto a stretcher and told the Iraqi police to take him away. I feel guilt anytime I see a mother with her children, like the one who cried hysterically and screamed that we are worse than Saddam as we forced her from her home. I feel guilt anytime I see a young girl, like the one I grabbed by the arm and dragged into the street. We were told we were fighting terrorists. The real terrorist was me, and the real terrorism is this occupation. Racism within the military has long been an important tool to justify the destruction and occupation of another country. It has long been used to justify the killing, subjugation, and torture of another people. Racism is a vital weapon employed by this government. It is more important weapon than a rifle, a tank, a bomber, or a battleship. It is more destructive than an artillery shell, or a bunker buster, or a tomahawk missile. While those weapons are created and owned by this government, they are harmless without people willing to use them. Those who send us to war do not have to pull a trigger or lob a mortar round. They do not have to fight the war, they merely have to sell the war. They need a public who is willing to send their soldiers into harm's way. They need soldiers who are willing to kill and be killed without question. They can spend millions on a single bomb, but that bomb only becomes a weapon when the ranks in the military are willing to follow orders to use it. They can send every last soldier anywhere on earth, but there will only be a war if soldiers are willing to fight. And the ruling class, the billionaires who profit from human suffering, care only about expanding their wealth controlling the world economy, understand that their power lies only in their ability to convince us that war, oppression, and exploitation is in our interest. They understand that their wealth is dependent on their ability to convince the working class to die to control the market of another country. And convincing us to kill and die is based on their ability to make us think that we are somehow superior. Soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen, have nothing to gain from this occupation. The vast majority of people living in the U.S. have nothing to gain from this occupation. In fact, not only do we have nothing to gain, but we suffer more because of it. We lose limbs, endure trauma, and give our lives. Our families have to watch flag-draped coffins lowered into the earth. Millions in this country without health care, jobs, or access to education must watch this government squander over $450 million a day on this occupation. That is just powerful. Simply just amazing. See, but did you catch that, man? You have to quote that. The real terrorist was me. Forget all that Al-Qaeda, Taliban, Islamic extremism nonsense. No, we terrorized the people of Iraq far more than any Islamic extremist group could dream of. I mean, that three-minute speech right there, it spoke volumes about the real effects of the American foreign policy and also the causes of our foreign policy. What the troops of this country were forced to do by our corrupt, bought-off leaders was horrific. They were forced to kill 200,000-plus civilians. They were forced to create the breeding grounds for the likes of ISIS and Hezbollah and all of these savages. We created utter chaos in Iraq and and many other regions of the world. However, I do believe he was a little too harsh on the troops to say that you were the terrorists. No, you have to understand, if troops were told the truth about what they do for the U.S. government, it would be an all-out mutiny to say the least. But they're not. Our troops are lied to by our leaders. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. These troops are told they are fighting for freedom and democracy and all of this feel-good crap. But in reality, it could not be farther from the truth. I mean, we've had so many military conflicts, the list runs to China. We've installed, supported, armed, financed so many brutal dictators, the list runs to the moon. The idea that we're fighting for freedom and democracy is grade A, right off the truck crap. Especially if you're going to install like a 150,000 mil military dictators that are going to terrorize the people of their country. Come on, man. But 
It's not the troops' fault. They're simply doing what they're told and following orders and sending the check home to their families. But, but to his other points, this the guy completely nailed it on how money is fueling these ridiculous wars. See, politicians are given a million dollars by these military companies that make all of these weapons and artillery like Northrop Grumman and Halliburton. And then they're told to go along with all of this money, support as much war as possible, so they make money. People, they have a hard time believing how simple it really is behind the scenes for these politicians to do whatever these companies want with just a wave of a few dollars. But it is true. Nobody in their right mind supports 12 wars and supports being the world policemen and the supposed freedom fighters. But see, the money they smell coming from these military contractors, that makes them support it. Because I am sure that all of these war hawks like John McCain and Ted Cruz and even Democrats like Hillary Clinton, they do not mind getting a million dollars from these military contractors. And then all they have to do in return is say a few things about how bad ISIS is and cast the vote to start wars across the world. That's a deal they will take, believe me. So that's another fantastic point made by this veteran. So... Listen, overall, probably one of the most definitive and powerful speeches I've heard on this topic. And beyond the fact that this is coming from an actual Iraq war veteran, these are still huge points that needed to be made. Because of this country, tens of millions of people have died, and many parts of the world are in chaos. That is the definition of terrorism, and that's also the definition of being a total hypocrite. Simple as that. Well, people, thank you all for listening to Progressive Talk Daily. Remember to hit the subscribe button, spam that like button, and visit the comment section below. If you want more videos like this one, check out the rest of the channel. And remember to tell your friends and family about PTD. Spread the word. Have a fantastic day, everybody.